Hi everybody, um, I just wrote this short story, fresh off the presses, uh, <laughs> and um, I'm going to read it today. I'll try to do my best uh, audiobook ASMR voice for you, so here we go. <laughs> uh, this is called A Dream. Bear Dim 6x6. He wakes in the bare, dim 6x6 room. By some instinct, he reaches his hand out to stop an alarm that had not played. Confused, sees that the clock by his bedside has unmoving hands, poised like bows after a final note. He couldn't recall the last time he had been awake, searching the depths of his memory and finding nothing but the faint haze of his own reflection, floating atop leagues of indiscernible depths. More alert now, he scans the room. Bare, dim, six by six, windowless. He sees with alarm that there are no doors, entries, exitways. The bed takes up the left wall, companions by a small nightstand. A desk across from him, naked, except for a leather-bound book and a pencil reduced to a stub. He hadn't noticed in the low light, but there is a note tacked on the wall across from him. It read, Sleep, and sleep and gladness through the years, when marrow sheds its memory of blood, and yesterdays from present are not clear, survivor of each second's careful flood. Though dreams are all you know, all you can take, do not despair the world outside these walls, for they protect you from that dull awake where sunsets etch their mark like madmen's scrawl. A poem? The words carousel around his head, sleep, blood, dreams. His hands are shaking now. With some strange kind of respect for the message, he fixes it back on the wall. There seem to be a multitude of tack holes dotting the wall like foreign constellations. Stars, he thought. Thinking upon them seemed as unclear as remembering his features. Did he have family? Friends? He takes some dizzied steps back to the bed, stares at his hands, flips to, the, to his palms, and with dull horror realizes they have no marks of any kind. Fingerprints, creases, minutia, only the lines where his digits bent at the knuckles. Nothing to distinguish him from anyone else. He gingerly touches his face and finds that he has similarly indiscriminate features and exhales a shaky sigh of relief. At least there were no serious anomalies. His nerves are shot and his bones feel heavy. Steadying himself, he takes some steps to the desk and picks up the book, thumbs the pages. There is almost a reluctance in his mannerisms. Mustering up courage, he opens the jaws of the book. For clarity, I'll number the dates by days. Of course, it's impossible to tell whether such a unit of time exists. It's pointless to explain such things for another person's sake, but I have suspicion that time and memory flow curiously here. For that reason, I hope you'll excuse the inconsistencies. Day 1 Faces and emotions float above my head like some infant's crib mobile. It's overwhelming. The interplay between both leads to even more fragments. A lover's eyes. Startling pain. The subtle curve of a reluctant smile. And yet, nothing to distinguish me from these ghosts. Oddly, I don't feel any distress at this or at the conditions I now live in. The familiar have become strangers to me. And the only familiar, the only constant, is sleep. Each dream compounds on the next, abstracting each shard of a memory into smaller and smaller puzzle pieces. Even if broader clarity is lost, they seem to fit together in new and strange patterns that give greater insight at the cost of greater confusion. I have lost myself. I am a stranger to myself. I wish to sleep. He flips to a later date. Day 49. Is it possible to feel alive and dead simultaneously? There is a possibility I am dead, 
though it is unclear. I seem to have a pulse. The air fills my lungs and departs them the same. I have some faint memory of school where we were asked if clouds were alive. Perhaps I am like a cloud, wandering through nothingness, dissipating and reforming at a whim. But this train of thought depresses me. I will sleep. Heavy eyes. The last page. Day question mark. I know now the real dimensions of this tiny world. It is as large as I have allowed it. My heart is a room as claustrophobic as I have designed it. If my heart feels heavy, it is merely the weight of its self-imposed exile behind its cage of ribs. I have finally accomplished what I have always wanted. I have forgotten everything and everyone that mattered to me. Attached to no one. Obligated to no one. Hated by no one. Loved by no one. But without room to hurt, there is no room for joy. Without a place to mourn, there is no place to rejoice. Even this milestone, then, is a failure. I wish to feel pain again. I must not sleep. I will not sleep. I'll stay awake for as long as I can, remembering the fragments of pain my brain has granted I remember. I will hurt so that I may feel, and I will cast off messaged bottles from this island, reaching as roots into soil, searching as starlight into blackness. I wish to be awake. He drops the book. Had he failed? What did that mean? A new kind of feeling overwhelms him. It was deeper than sadness, less cynical than futility. It was a pervading and absolute feeling of acceptance. He had accepted his fate, accepted the hurt he had felt, the hurt which had puppeteered him, the hurt which had split as cells in their multiplying, vicious ex existence. Though he still feels a burden, the room appears to him a little broader, with dimensions a little easier to breathe in. The change had been in inches, but after a forever of sameness, seems miles. He lays his body down to sleep. He awakens, rubs his eyes. He opens the curtains a bit. The morning sun strums through blinds like an old, familiar song. Yeah, so that's the story. I don't really write short stories that much, but... When I do, they're usually interesting. <laughs> so, um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.